Welcome to the Come Follow Me program. We're going to start from Enos to the Words of Mormon, and Marinda is going to start us. Okay, so we start out with Enos. I love, part of the reason I love reading Enos is he's such, he's it's telling a story, mm -hmm. and it's so beautifully done. He talks about how he, was th he knew his father was a just man, he taught him the language, and he taught a lot about the Lord, and he talks about this wrestle he had before the Lord and for the remission of his sins. He said he went to hunt beasts in the forest, and the words of his father, and all these other things about eternal life, and like all these other things, just struck his heart. Mm -hmm. And he began to ponder, think about it, and he says, my soul hungered. I love that word. Don't we all want to hunger after truth and righteousness? Mm -hmm. And we know what hungering is because we fast. So <laughs> we, we know at least once a month what 24 hours of no food feels like, right? Yeah. So he says his whole soul hungered. And he cried to his maker in prayer. And he did it all the day and even into the night. And then he receives an answer from God. And he's told that his sins are forgiven him. And this is where we get our memorized for the week. Joseph. Okay, so our memorize is Enos chapter 1 verse 6. And it says, And I, Enos, knew that God could not lie. There, wherefore, my guilt was swept away. Yeah. I personally really love this. His faith and his knowledge knowing that Heavenly Father cannot lie to us and because of that his, he no longer has a reason to feel guilty for the sins that he has committed. Mm -hmm. He allows the atonement to do its job. Before you start back up, Randall, something that struck me as you started talking is that this is again a beautiful example of a father, a patriarch of a home or a family doing his work of teaching his children. And that's something that you guys have had the, the blessing of in your lives. You've had a father who's, who's had at the foremost in his thoughts that feeling and belief that you needed to be taught the things he learned. And so it's a beautiful blessing. And Enos had this same blessing from his father, too. He still had to come to his own testimony. He had to have his own testimony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else did you want to share? So he continues on, and he talks about, like, after... He was able to get remission for his own sins. He worried about his own brethren and all these other things. And it just reminded me, like especially in verse 9 specifically, he talks about he felt the desire for their welfare and how he even poured his whole soul out unto God for them. And it just reminded me when we're really converted to like the gospel of Jesus Christ, we don't want to keep it to ourselves. We want to share it with everyone. We want everyone to know. We all want to partake of the fruit of happiness, right? That tree of life. It's not something we want to like hoard up. We want to share it with everyone. That's true. Why do missionaries leave their homes for 18 months to two years? <laughs> so that's what we see him end up doing. Um, he does go out and he teaches. And they go out and they try to teach the Lamanites and all these other things. And that leads us up into the book of Jerem. Okay, good. What I think yeah. is interesting is even though the Lamanites have sworn that they will wipe the Nephites out, they still try. They still have that love for their fellow men that the Lamanites seem to have lost. Right, right. There's something about losing the spirit, losing the light of Christ that causes that hardness for sure. It's very interesting here. We don't get a lot of detail for quite some time in the Book of Mormon. We go from Enos to Jerem to Omni. And then this passes through well, five or six hands where they write one or two verses. But we get a really interesting story in Omni. And this is a connecting part of the Book of Mormon. Who do we connect here, Emma? Do you remember? I don't know. Well, we got the Nephites. Okay, so be thinking about who we're connecting, because we're, when we're done with this, you're going to remember, oh yeah, we connected those people. <laughs> but we come through here, and Omni, actually, not Omni, yes, Omni, he, Amaron, Amaron, he tells us that the more 
wicked part of the Nephites have been destroyed. They've had wars back and forth with the Lamanites, and the more wicked have been destroyed because the Lord wouldn't suffer them to be led out of the land of Jerusalem, to be kept and preserved from falling into the hands of their enemies if they didn't keep the commandments. Because that's the promise of this land. If you keep my commandments, you'll prosper, you'll be protected. But if you don't, what does the Lord say? If we don't keep his commandments, we have no promise. right? And so that's what they find here. And then several others write one or two verses until we get to a man named Amalekai. Now Amalekai lives in the days of Mosiah. Mom. Just a minute. Yeah, I know, you're going to talk about Amalekai, but not yet. Mm -hmm. Amalekai lives in the days of Mosiah, and this is not Mosiah the son of Benjamin. This is Mosiah the father of Benjamin. Benjamin likes his dad so much, he names his son after him. And sometimes I'll say we have a, a Benjamin sandwich here, right? With, a, with Mosiah bread. Kind of, <laughs> I know, it's kind of silly, but it helps me remember a little bit of what's happening here. We have two Mosiahs. This first Mosiah is called upon by the Lord. The voice of the Lord warns him to flee out of the land with as many as would go with him. And so he does. And Amalekai, who has the records, he's the descendant of Jacob and Nephi, he's the one with the records, he goes with them. And they're led in the land, they don't know where they're going, but all, as they go, they're led by the Lord, and they're led by many preachings and prom prophesyings, and being admonished continually by the Word of God. So they're led by Heavenly Father. They're led out. This is just the same way Lehi was led out, right? When Nephi's life was in danger, Nephi was led out. Now we have a group of Nephites being led out again. And what happens is that they go through the wilderness and they find another people they didn't know existed. They come to the land of Zarahemla. They come to the land of Zarahemla and they meet these people that they can't really talk to, but what they discover is, these are Israelites. These are people who were brought out from Jerusalem when Jerusalem was destroyed. All these prophets before prophesying, I know it's been destroyed, the Lord's shown it to me. Here's their proof it happened. Because one of the sons of Zedekiah escaped and a group of people with him, and they came across the ocean, but they had no records. They just escaped probably by the skin of their teeth, and they have no records. Their language has been corrupted. That's why they can't talk to each other. So Mosiah has them taught in the language of his people. And Zarahemla, knowing the importance of his genealogy, is able to give his genealogy to Mosiah and his people by memory. Because with no record, they've forgotten how to write. They didn't come and start making a record. So unlike Nephi... All they have is what they can remember of that, what is it, about 300 years or so, almost 400 years. That's all they have is what they can remember. And so they get together as a people, and they determine to, to unite, to become one people. They choose Mosiah to be their king, and this always is very interesting to me. Mosiah is the new guy. These are the new people. Zarahemla is established here, but they choose Mosiah to be their king as they unite. Probably because of the gifts of the Lord that Mosiah has. They also bring him a large stone. It has engravings on it. None of them can read it. But they tell about a man that they discovered whose name was Coriantumr. I told you this is a connecting part of the Book of Mormon. <laughs> Coriantumr was the last Jaredite king. And that record is not the record that we get in Ether. This is a different record. But it is a record of Coriantumr and his people and their destruction, the destruction of the Jaredites. So all three of these peoples right now coming together. And they, they join together, and eventually the Lamanites do find them. But at the end of Mosiah's life, he has a son named Benjamin. Benjamin is also a good man. You like Benjamin, don't you? <laughs> I can see. You're like, yeah, Benjamin. <laughs> and the first Book of Mormon video just came out with King Benjamin talking to his people, didn't it? Well, what I think is interesting is like the Nephites always engraved on metal plates. Mm -hmm. But then this stone comes up from Coriantumr. He's like, I engraved on this. <laughs> yeah, and who knows who engraved it, right? Maybe Coriantumr did. We know that Ether kept his record on plates. Mm -hmm. So we find those later as we get into the story. This is a part of the Book of Mormon where people begin to get a little confused. So I want you to be really aware that we've got separate people living at separate times. Because during the time of King Benjamin, some of the people, the Nephites that came with them, wanted to go back to the land of Nephi. 
So you have Lamanites and Nephites in the land of Nephi, right? You've got Mulekites and Nephites, Mosiah and Benjamin and Mosiah, over here in the land of Zarahemla. And they're living at the same time. So this is a part that sometimes confuses people because we're going to get a part of the story and then we're going to step back and we're going to hear what happened to these people who came back over here. So be careful as you read this not to get confused. It's just like when Miranda and Joseph head out to a class and we're all still here at home and we get together at the dinner table at night and say, what happened while you were gone today? Here's what we did while you were gone today. And we put our stories together. And that's what we're going to have here in the Book of Mormon. Now, Catherine... Tell us a little bit about, about Amalekai and these plates. What happened? So Amalekai is the man. Amalekai, sorry. <laughs> He's righteous, and like you said, he goes with Mosiah to the land of Zarahemla. And he has the records, and he talks about, like, he talks about Coriantumur and how the language is confounded. And he talks a little bit about King Benjamin and how good he is, and how he doesn't really have anybody else to give the plates to, mm -hmm. so he gives the plates to Benjamin. Right. So now Benjamin, the king, has all the plates. These small plates of Nephi that have the prophesyings. The large plates were kept with the kings. That's Benjamin and Uzziah. Now these records all come together in one place. One place. It's very, very interesting. And Amalekai closes off with this beautiful scripture that I just want to share with you really quickly. It's in Omni, and there's only one chapter, so Omni 1. In verse 26, he says, I would that ye should come unto Christ, who is the Holy One of Israel, and partake of his salvation and the power of his redemption, Yea, come unto him, and offer your whole souls as an offering unto him, and continue in fasting and prayer, and endure to the end, and as the Lord liveth, ye will be saved. We get a piece of the doctrine of Christ right here, don't we? This you will just continue to see, but it's a, such an important reminder. I think daily we have to remember, come unto Christ, offer your whole soul to him, endure to the end. Every day we have to remember, remember, remember why we read these every day, isn't it? We have to remember. And I love coming up and just watching you guys just, I'll come around a corner and I'll see you sitting on a couch reading your Book of Mormon or walk in your room and there you are with your Book of Mormon and, and the habits that you're gaining. It's really, really important. And I know that that's something that makes Daddy and I really happy to watch you do. It's really important to us to know that you have that same love for the scriptures that we have. Now one more connecting point here is the words of Mormon <laughs> Mormon lives, right, in 400 A.D.? A.D., yeah. And we're Christ, here at yeah. 130 B.C. But this is a little insert because these are the small plates of Nephi. Words of Mormon are something that he inserts there to help connect these. Joseph, will you tell us a little bit about that? Because you were talking sure. about that. Well, Mormon here says he has no idea why he's supposed to attach these. Mm -hmm. Uh, he says that the words that he found on these smaller plates are very pleasing. Mm -hmm. And he says, I know that the Lord has a purpose for them or else he wouldn't have me put them back here. Mm -hmm. So that's really what he's saying as he is connecting mm -hmm. this piece. Um, he says, I have no idea why I need them, but here they are. I'm now going to continue with my record. Right, right. I always think it's interesting. I wonder how he found them. Like, oh, what's the Oh. Yeah, he's okay. going through all his <laughs> room of records, right? Wow, that's a really, wow, I have, wish I'd seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have to remember that because of these small plates, these replaced uh, the book of Lehi. Right. Which... Joseph Smith gave to Martin and Martin lost. Mm -hmm. The lost manuscript pages. Mm -hmm. So it's because the Lord obviously saw what he was doing and what needed to happen. And as he uh, always does, he has a plan to help us even though we may make our mistakes. Right. The Lord doesn't get surprised. 
He sees the end from the beginning. Sometimes it's easy to get worried or fearful when we see things going on around us or something happens in our own lives. It's easy to get worried or fearful. But the Lord always says, be of good cheer. Or an, 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 an angel will appear and he'll say, do not fear, because I was like, ah, right? <laughs> do not fear or be of good cheer are the things they say. There's a soberness in that. There's a need to step back and say, I don't need to be afraid. The Lord has a plan. I don't maybe understand his plan in this, but I know he has one. That's a, that's a leap of faith, right? Do you ever have to have that leap of faith, Emma? Yeah? And so, always remember that. Put a smile on your face, everybody right now, put a smile on your face. <laughs> and be of good cheer. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. All right, let's close off our recording today with a song. This one goes with the end of Jacob, actually, where he talks about, I, I go to meet my maker, I go to be the, before the pleasing bar of God, and he's so, I don't know, excited is the right word, but he is looking forward to seeing his Savior, being with his Savior again. And I think that that's an important thing to remember, is just to have faith and gratitude mm -hmm. for our Savior. So we're going to sing one verse of Jesus, the very thought of thee. Want to give us a starting note, Catherine? Okay, here we go, and. Jesus, the very thought of thee, with sweetness fills my breast, the sweeter from thy face to see, and in thy presence rest. That was beautiful. Emma, will you just invite everybody? Find us and follow us on Facebook. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe Subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. All right, thank you very much. Till we meet again. <laughs>